Hello everyone and welcome to another Borderlands 3 video. Um, today I'm going to show you guys a quick and dirty way on how to do this uh, invincibility glitch. Um, what you're going to need is a invincibil er, invulnerability artifact that gives you invulnerability for 5 seconds and you're going to want to equip that and you can use pretty much any one. I got one really early on in the game, like right before I beat it. So you can use any one that gives you invulnerability. You'll pretty much uh, chuck nades on the ground like I'm doing here. And uh, after you get to that half health and get to that invulnerability state, you'll switch to your menu again. And uh, you can put your shield back on and switch to any relic other than the one, obviously, that has the invulnerability. I'm using this luck one right now, so I can run through this boss run as well. Because uh, right now I'm going to take you guys through and run through a few bosses in the game, like all the big bosses and uh, like the four main vault bosses, I guess. Um, here's what's going on with the stats right now in this fight. It kind of sucks for me because I get assault rifle and extra health and shields for them and all that shit. But I'm gonna try and trooper through it with this, uh, uh, the call here. I actually just picked this up a couple hours ago. I'm pretty happy I finally got one because I had been using the, uh, little minigun I'd been using in most of my other plays. But, uh, this gun is really good. I see why everyone loves it so much, and I, I'm kind of sad that I've been missing out on it for this long. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's, uh, it's really powerful. I'm just really bad right now. I didn't realize for the longest time that I need to stand on his right-hand side to not just hit his shield or his arm in the way. Because every time he stands there with his right hand up or whatever, and blocks all my critical hits, so later on I figure it out and I end up shooting him right in the face and kill him really, really fast, like I should be doing. But, of course, this gun doesn't do shit to shields, which kind of sucks compared to my other gun, but otherwise it is amazing. Little Troy here decides to take a few good hits to the face before I figure out what I'm doing wrong. Like I said, I'm standing here shooting him right in the hand and wondering why I'm not getting any critical hits. I'm like, man, I'm dumb. And I finally move to the right and start nailing those crits, and he starts to go down a little quicker, I promise. I, it, it's not all the way embarrassing the whole time. I take him out really quick from here. But, yeah, a little little Troy boy doesn't stand much of a chance usually. Usually I can kill him in like two clips, but right now he's uh, extra strong just because of that whole uh, damage reduction to my ARs and stuff, but he dropped uh, a good amount of loot. I'd say, I think he said it dropped two legendaries, which isn't too bad. I can't be mad about that. Compared to online, he usually doesn't drop two. If I'm lucky, he'll drop one. But I moved on into the vault here in a second, and, uh... Well, I, I didn't really get a whole lot luckier. I, I got a Jericho in the very last chest in the vault, which was kind of disappointing. If we move on to the next boss here, the fucking Tyrene. And, uh, I don't have as many deficits, so she goes down a little faster than Troy did, of course. I'll be honest, she goes down about the way it usually goes. I use eight bullets in that whole time to knock her down to her first invulnerability state. And then, of course, she does her little, I'm gonna lay down on the ground like a little bitch thing. I slide around to the side, hit it once with the duck, duck, dukes, whatever you want to call it. I pull back, well, I try to pull back out my AR and I forget where it's at. <laughs> and then I pop that thing back out and you just watch her health just disappear all over again. She goes back into the invulnerability state. And uh, we repeat.
repeat the process all over again. It's a really easy way to farm the bosses if you do it this way. And I'm using the same build that I made the video on yesterday, which if you didn't see that, definitely check it out. It is an amazing build for taking on bosses on Mayhem 3, as you can see. I was hitting her a little too hard, I about killed the game there. <laughs> but she is uh she's not super strong, but I generally can take her out a lot quicker than this. She uh managed to sneak away in this invulnerability state here in a second too, which kinda disappointed me because I was hoping to just take her out. And of course she got to fly away and waste a whole bunch of time. But hey, that's Borderlands for you. They always had these little things to waste your little amounts of time just to keep you playing for longer. So I just shot this guy for a second until he came back down. And then of course she laid back down as soon as she came to the ground and hit her with the duck again. And uh, of course say bye bye to Miss Tyreen. <laughs> She dropped, I think, four or five legendaries. I think four this time, yeah. And then I ended up sliding in, picking all this stuff up, because, of course, everything's useful. You can get money out of all of this stuff, so I pick up everything I can, aside from the uh, skins that you get. I don't bother picking them up unless I haven't unlocked them, of course. They're only worth a dollar, so it just takes up backpack space, so don't do that. Um, otherwise, I got four decent guns. I even stopped for a good minute here to check and see if it was better than mine, but it wasn't, sadly, so I picked it up, moved on, went into the uh, vault here, and I guess I didn't really have a whole lot of luck in here, but I got something at least. Something's better than nothing. So that makes five on this one boss. Don't be on it this time. And the very next chest, it makes it six. Granted, not great guns, but... I always hate fighting this guy. I don't know if you guys have a special strategy for killing him easier. I always get these really bad deficits, too, to make it to where my AR doesn't work. And on top of that, my... Most of my guns are fire elemental too, and it makes it really difficult to kill this guy as well. Um, but he kind of he puts up a little fight. I kind of skip over a little bit of the dumb shit in this because, of course, he takes forever after you get him to the immune state. I I, I didn't want to waste your time watching him jump back and forth because I don't even bother shooting at him half the time. Just a waste of ammo. And then I got little booty pants over here to take my Lyuta to the face. Good old trusty reliable ever since Borderlands 2 with my Gunzer. He takes some good old shots though. I don't know why he ended up taking so many rounds at the end here. Like the first time I shot at him he just like ate the fuck out of him. But this time he just, just kept eating clip after clip so I pulled out the duck and just got him to his super saiyan god state he called up goku and said yo i need this so he sucked in all the green siemens and then did his little thing jumping around the room for about five minutes while i was standing there like all right dude this is enough and he finally came back down and this is the worst part of fighting him is this state because he's in fire mode and all my guns are fire so i pulled out the cutsman and of course he starts jumping around like a bitch again so I pull it back out I still stay steady on him and I'm I'm certain that it'll do damage after a minute just the way my class is set up but as you can see I'm kind of whittling him down but it's better than what the uh, <laughs> ARs are doing right now or snipers they're both at that deficit stage so I'm using this little Cutsman, because it actually does do a lot of damage on most of the bigger bosses like this. It hits really hard in that wide horizontal pattern and like hits them all the way throughout too. 
even at this state, I'm like, alright, I'm just killing this guy before he gets up and starts jumping around and wasting even more time. I'm like, oh yeah, he's fire resistant, so pulled the duck out, killed him all. And now for the most disappointing run of all the four. Like, I look around and see one legendary, like, bro. Alright, and I look up, walk up to it, like, damn. That's a major disappointment. A fucking RPG. But, oh well. Go into the vault. I'm still kind of mad when I get in here. I run up to the first chest like, you better give me something. And, of course, it gives me something that I really don't want. But it's still legendary, so I can't be mad. So it makes it two for this run on this boss. Can't be too mad. Um, after that get major disappointment at this next chest and I'm like alright whatever I'll hit this next one luckily all the chests were here cause I just ran through on online mode and switched the internet off but yeah we get this uh, one more legendary to make it three for this boss run into the last boss grave ward which I generally have really really good luck with him and my deficits not being too bad so, I get in here with him, and of course my AR does alright, and I'm not really too nerfed, I guess. So, I get up here and wipe him out pretty decently easy, I'd say. Not super simple, but I don't use but maybe 30 bullets in the whole fight. And on top of that, I just demolish him. But he generally gives me probably the best loot out of everyone. I'm kind of happy that he does. Because he's, uh, he's pretty easy to kill, I'd say. I have uh, a pretty good time killing him usually. If I want to farm any of the major bosses and just keep killing or save and quit, I'd rather do with him or Trant, which I kind of go over. I'm going to go over him at the end here. Just to kind of give you an idea, because he's a really, really good farm if you're playing offline, like I'm doing right here. Just to give you guys an example of the difference between playing online and offline. I'm going to play offline today, and we'll do another run here in uh, the next couple days, and we'll make an online run and see what the difference is. Um... I didn't get an exact tally for how many legendaries I get at the end of this for killing these four big guys, but if you guys want to let me know, that'd be cool. Um, I wouldn't say you have to count Tront because I wouldn't consider him a vault boss, I guess. <laughs> He's just a pretty good loot boss I go to a lot of the time especially after I've already killed all four of these guys. But as you can see, he drops a lot of good legendaries. I mean, not great legendaries, but a lot of legendaries nonetheless. All legendaries I've already had many of, but... He does drop me a new Unforgiven that has a better critical hit damage percent than the one that I currently had in my bank, so I did pick that up and was kind of happy to get that. Um just because I want to try and exploit with that gun actually but moving on um, this is a really good spot to farm if you want to farm for really good legendaries and loot you can come here on Athena's and just come to the spot where Tron actually spawns at and you come to that spot right there you'll keep save and quit you come right there and you drop down kill him save and quit do it all over again pretty simple and easy one but he's a really quick boss to kill. I never really have any problems killing him. I try and play with different guns while I kill him a lot of the time just to see what works best. This time I think I use the Cutsman. Um, but he's fun. He gives you good guns. But Anyway, um, if this was helpful to you guys and lets you guys see the real difference between playing online and offline, for now, we're going to see the difference offline. This is a good offline play, and you're going to see a, a good amount of legendaries playing offline. But, again, if this was helpful to you guys, and the uh, invincibility thing, of course, is always helpful. You can just run through this shit without even thinking about anything. 
can just smack these guys, play with different guns, walk right up to their face like I'm doing here. It's fun. It's great. I mean, granted, it takes a little of the fun out of it if you don't want to do that. Like, it's just, I like to do this whenever I'm doing my loot runs. It helps a lot. Just, you can kill enemies and not worry. But, again, if this was helpful to you guys, definitely give me a, a like and sub. Drop it in the comments if this was helpful. And, uh, let me know if you actually kept count of how many legendaries I got. Drop it down in the comments if you kept count. Um. I guess after you get done with this one, you can uh, loot this. There's always Iridium sitting in these corners, don't forget that. And um, there's two chests right here, and one of the big red Iridium chests at the other end. But these two are very likely to give you legendaries as well, as you can see. <laughs> but there's this legendary, or uh, Iridium chest here at the end as well you can hit up and it'll often give you legendaries as well but of course if you come to this end you're gonna spawn at this uh, quick or fast travel station so you'll want to run down to this end before you save and quit and you'll run down here go to the end go up the stairs and you're done save and quit but thanks for watching guys I really appreciate all the support and I hope to see you guys in the next one Rocket.